Shark Attack was released by Games of Apollo for the Atari 2600 in 1982, originally under the title Lockjaw, but MCA threatened to sue Apollo over copyright infringement of Jaws. Since they didn't have a lot of money, Apollo relented and re-released the game as Shark Attack, which is the much more common copy you'll find. In fact, Lockjaw attained a 9 out of 10 rating for rarity on AtariAge.com, which translates to extremely rare. As far as the game goes, it's another maze game attempting to cash in on the Pac-Man craze. You play as a scuba diver attempting to retrieve lost treasure at the bottom of a shark-infested sea. Swimming along the maze of kelp, you'll pick up diamonds and bring them back to the shark cage at the center of the screen. Whenever you reach the cage, whatever amount of diamonds you've collected will be added to your total. But if you get killed along the way, the diamonds you're carrying are wiped out. That's the standard gobble variation. The other is called pick em up, where you have to grab each diamond one at a time and bring them back to the cage individually. I don't like this mode at all. It's way too tedious and there's a lot less at stake without the carrying function. The cage will protect you from the shark, although if it runs into the cage while you're in it, it will take a diamond away. The cage has some options too. You can either have it always open, control when it opens and closes by pressing the fire button, have it rotate to different sides of the cage, or just open and close at random. One thing the cage cannot protect you from is the Loch Ness Monster. That's right, it turns out the shark infested waters are actually the Scottish waters of Loch Ness, where there are no sharks. Nessie will sometimes appear from one of the caves in the four corners, and will continuously chase you down until you lure her back into one of the caves, which is highly recommended since there are also sharks around. Plus, like I mentioned earlier, you can't protect yourself from this beast in the cage. These caves I just mentioned are called Mystery Caves. Heading into one of them will warp you into one of the other caves at complete random. You can play one or two players, although you have to alternate, which is a real drop of the ball, as racing to see who can pick up more diamonds while staying safe from attack would have added a whole nother element to the game. The difficulty switches adjust the speed of the diver to either a slow or fast setting, and in a two player game you can set each player at a different speed if you want to handicap someone. On paper, this has the makings of a pretty good maze game. But paper is paper, execution is a whole nother story. And as Chris Berman would say, that's why they play the games. The controls are really the only problem, but it's a big one. Just breathing next to the walls will get you tangled up in the kelp. You have to continuously wrestle with the joystick to keep yourself in between it all. And you thought the underwater stage in TMNT 1 was bad. At least there you could swim through that shit. This just interrupts the flow of the game by epic proportions. I mean, in Pac-Man, you move fluidly between the walls, even in the shitty Atari 2600 version. You're never having to worry about where you line up so you don't get blockaded by one. It's frustrating, cheap, and unnecessary. And since you're obviously trying to emulate Pac-Man with this game, you might want to focus on its good points instead of adding something shitty of your own. You're not going to win any points for originality with the maze game to begin with, so you might as well just rip it off as much as you can. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Games of Apollo, who went bankrupt in 1983. Maybe next time you'll heed my advice and get it right. Oh, and you don't just get stuck in the kelp, you also get stuck in the open water. Look at this shit, you have to get in the exact perfect spot. I really thought this was a glitchy, isolated incident, but it's just shitty programming. Right, Games of Apollo, who went bankrupt in 1983? Shark Attack could have been a pretty cool, if unimaginative game, but fell way short of the mark. Shark! Shark!